Hello and welcome to Wing In It. And once more, we're back here with another Wingspan tournament game. This one is from the Gregarious Grouse Extravaganza, which is the base game and European expansion tournament we have got on the go at the moment. We're in the group stage and it is our last game. So uh, we're not through into the knockouts yet. I think we do need to try our best to get a win here. Um, of course, we'd be trying to get a win anyway, but um, we may well need it here. So we're going to jump in. We're going first. And let's take a look at the starting hand. Okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Rose Bird and Grass Beat, good opening. Forest Bird for sure. And the Black Turn works quite nicely as a wetland option. So, um, yeah, always good. Always good to open with a good Forest Bird and a good Wetland Bird. So that'd definitely be nice. We should take a look at the tray. Okay, I mean, to be fair, European Goldfinch. Um, certainly not bad. Certainly not bad. Um, and might be the kind of bird. I don't know. Do we go and pick that up turn one? That's going to be a difficult choice um, to make. Considering we don't have any tucking birds. It's maybe not the strongest bird uh, for my opponent to end up with. But yeah, it might be something we... Let's go for a tickle at the bonus cards. Okay, Thologist is nice. And definitely supports go for the pink power. Um, definitely prefer that over. Well, scientist, how's the feed looking as well? Okay, um, that's okay. That's okay. So I think we can, I think we can take Grosbeak food, and then we can look to take food and get the turn down. I mean, you know, there's worms, there's fish there. That's going to help um, get the turn down and get something going there. And yeah, I think. I think we leave the goldfinch. I think we leave it. I think it's... I don't know. It just feels like it's not good for our tempo to be drawing cards before we've got this turn done. I want to be seeing more cards. I want to be laying eggs and, and being able to discard and draw more uh, before... Yeah, before going for something like that goldfinch. I mean, if it's still there, maybe we do jump on it, but um, I'm kind of content to leave it. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if that's a mistake or not as this game evolves. But yeah, I think I'd say happy to lock that in. Pretty pretty basic start, pretty base game start. Um, as I say, good forest bird, get a bit of extra food, good wetland bird, see some extra cards. We're going to try and get these down, do a bit of digging, and see what comes up. And all right, on to our first turn. We'll see what our opponents kept. Three birds and two food. I mean, okay, they've not kept goldfinch food, so maybe they're not tempted by it. Um, I think, as I say, we got to be getting this cross beak down, getting some food, and then think about drawing. Um, Grosbeak as well, to be fair, does help with this goldfinch. It gets the exact food that you need. Um, those berries and seeds, so... Yeah, that'll be... That'll be definitely nice if we can use the Grosbeak um, to potentially get the food for that goldfinch. Um, they've not taken it. Played American Kutso. Okay, well... I mean, they are tucking now. They are tucking, so do I... Do I throw everything out the window? <laughs> And take this goldfish. I'm very tempted. I think I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to pick it up. We'll uh, we'll go all out. Well, I've just given them another tucking bird, so maybe that didn't quite play out how I would have liked. But yeah, I think uh, I don't know. That was a little bit of a gut reaction, but I feel like we do want to be getting this out, especially now. I say with the with the tucking power of the coup. I mean. It's kind of interesting with this first hand around goal as well. Birds with tuck cards. I don't think we'd qualify if not for this. I mean, by the time we get it out, it might be too late to qualify anyway. But um, it's, yeah, maybe a way of of trying to sneak a point. Or maybe even a tie. I mean, it does depend what else they've got. But they are drawing. They didn't pick up. The tree swallowed. But we are going to go ahead. And we're going to take food. So, yeah, we'll do... We'll do worm and seed. And I think what we'll do, I think we'll take, I think we'll take food again. I think we'll take that seed and we'll gamble on the reroll. If we can get a berry, being able to get this out is going to be nice. I probably, to be honest, I probably hit it in the forest. Um, I would slow it down, or slow me down, getting it out. But that could be worth it. So okay, they're still drawing, continuing to dig. Let's gamble. Do we get the berry? We don't. That's a bit of a shame. But yeah, we do still try and get this down. So let's take the seed. So yeah, here's what we can do. We can lay eggs. We can force the goldfinch at the forest. We then take food and play the turn. And I think we just wait and draw cards next round. 
I think that might be how we play this. So, yeah, this um, this might be a bit too late to get it out for the uh, for the end of round, but still getting it out with you know my opponent would still have three turns left I think by the time I play that, so you know maybe they are going to keep drawing, um, or, or maybe they will tuck elsewhere. But at the very least, this will give a bit of a blocker. I mean, it does have pathologist, so, you know, we've got a brown, we've got a pink. We can maybe look for some other power colours um, to try and go in this forest and get a few more points there, but kind of wait and see. So, okay, they did, yeah. Did wonder if maybe eventually they would go and pick up the other tucking power. So, this is going to be interesting. See what they do with all these birds. I mean, you know, if you uh, need to get food, it's only one at a time, so for their sake... They will definitely want to have found a nice forest bird, but yeah, as I say, we'll play um, this goldfinch. Get that down. Um, and it is going to help the food access, so I think it's important to get out to that two food access. Um, and then, of course, I sew through the cross beak. So very different, very different on these baseboards to the Oceania expansion boards. You know, on those, you just get the cross beak out um, and you're already under your, your, your three food. So this is definitely much more needed, but okay, yeah, they... Are starting to take food. We'll get our goldfinch out. Um, and yeah, I think I say take food um, as long as the fish is still there. We should be all right. But even if it's taken, we can always go for a reroll. Um, but we do want to be getting this black turn out. Do our digging next turn or next round. So they're taking more food. We are going to do the same. And do we? Do we? Do we? Do we block these berries because <laughs> they do kind of need them. Um, I'm not sure I need two berries, but it would be potentially blocking if they do want to be getting that second wetland bird out and just make that a little bit more painful for them. So we're going to do it. Um, we're going to do it. And hopefully, hopefully find a use of this later. But um, yeah, we'll kind of wait and see. And who knows? I mean, I think we're probably going to be taking more food next round anyway. Once we've played our black turn, once we've done a bit of digging, uh, we are going to want to... Yeah, get some more food at some point, because we're going to want to play stuff, so. Um, certainly, certainly part of the plan, and yeah, maybe those berries can come in useful later, but we'll see, man. I don't know, maybe they've got a, maybe they've got a forest bird that they can get down with these um, two food, but yeah, I think it is, uh, it is worth trying to cause a bit of nuisance, cause a bit of havoc um, where you can, and this definitely feels like a spot where we yeah, potentially, potentially good. I was kind of hoping, to be honest, I was kind of hoping there were no berries there, or at least only one, and I would have taken one. Um, it's not ideal for me to be stuck with two berries in this position, but um, I think I think we can work around it, and I think the fact that my opponent, after taking a couple of quick turns, is having to have a bit of a think here, um, that does tell me that maybe we made things a little bit more annoying for them there. Um, which, as I say definitely helps. So we'll see. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they want to draw again and they're going to give me a tuck, but no, they're still taking food. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe a bit slow for them, but we're going to get our turn out. This has definitely been a bit of a slower start for us as well. I think, um, yeah, if everything had gone to plan and, you know, if the food had come up at the right time or um, if I hadn't gone and grabbed that goldfinch, I think we'd have been doing a bit of digging by now. So yeah, in that respect, it's not ideal to be slowing that down too much. But, you know, we've got some good points on the board. We've got, you know, some big point birds. We've got the pink power that, yeah, seems like they want to be doing tucking. So if we can steal some points from them that way, that's going to be very, very nice. And, yeah, in terms of food access, we are um, definitely ahead there. So unless they've, like, found a raven or something, um, <laughs> the fact that they keep taking food does concern me. But they might just be forcing down a raven here. But we'll see. Um, more tucking birds, though, are coming up. So barn swallow. I imagine they'll be jumping on that with uh, yeah, with their worms as well. Definitely a good choice to be going for. Um, but for us, yeah, I mean, if it's there, we'll take it. But I'm going to assume it's not. And I'm going to assume that we are going to have to go and do the digging. And it's baseboard, so we are looking for that grasses engine. Um, we're definitely yeah, going to want to try and build something up there. Try and... Yeah, score points that way. Um, we're not amazingly well set up. I've got to be set for some of these in a round goals, so that might take a little bit of work. But 
yeah, it does uh, depend a little bit what my opponent's going to do. They're going to draw, and we are going to get our first tuck on the goldfinch. So a little bit late for that end of round goal, but what can you do? Not a whole lot. Um, but yeah, we are going to draw cards. I think we're going to block this European Robin because that would just be very, very good for them. Um, they could easily force it down, so I do not want to give them that opportunity. And we're going to draw off the top. Also, store petrol is pretty nice um, to continue digging. So I think we might go with that and probably probably not this chickadee. Because I don't think we have too much usage for that. Um, but yeah, this storm petrol. This could be good. This could be good. It's another wet and bird. It's good for this end around. What are they doing? Playing cold to okay. Oh of course, yeah, that was in the tray as well. So that that'd be that's a good sign. That's a good sign that they didn't have Raven and they, they didn't have a better forest bird, so they are now starting to put something out. And we're gonna take food. And it's just it's berries galore. We're we're stuck with them even if we don't want them. Uh, it's just gonna be forced <laughs> into uh yeah, continually taking berries here, but we are at least getting the fish. Um, that we want here for the Storm Petra. So I think I'll probably take food again. I'm sort of assuming they're going to take food. Um, which might give us a re-roll or at least, yeah, a, a fresh look at a feeder. And then hopefully we can um, start getting some worms. I wouldn't mind picking up something like that Roadrunner from the tray. With uh, with some of this extra food I'm going to have, maybe I can get a rodent. Maybe I can get that down, get something going in, in a grasslands and, you know, it's another platform this type for end around goal two, so we'll kind of kind of wait and see. We'll kind of wait and see what um, what options we get on this bird feeder, but yeah, I think key um, is going to be really getting this storm petrol out. That feels like the key, um, and that is just going to help us out so much by uh, seeing lots and lots more cards. So they have gone and taken food. They've taken a berry, maybe not too surprising. Um, we are likewise going to take food and I think we do I think we do worm rat and then we take this as a seed and yeah then we can we can get the storm pitch out I mean we could play this European Robin as well I'm not really too sure how worth it that is and that would mean we couldn't take the roadrunner oh indigo bunting okay this game suddenly got interesting um, well, let's lay our eggs. Yeah, I think... Um, yeah, because we could... I don't know. We could do Robin, Storm Petrol, and then cards. But I may as well do Storm Petrol and cards first. Because I might find something better. Than Maybe I'm going to be the one to find a Raven. Who knows? But they've got Bunting, so that is good for them. Um, they will be laying eggs over for a Worm and going. Maybe for the Barn Swallow. In the grasses now, do a bit of card cycling. So we'll see on that front. And yeah, we'll get our Storm Petrol out. And as I said earlier, I mean, we're looking for a nice, probably a bonus card bird or, you know, a nice big point bird, a nice warbler or something to go in the forest to get more points of Ethologist. Um, you know, we're playing we're playing without Oceania, so we're not going to be getting those yellow powers, but we might get something tealy um, to go up there in the forest. So they did legs, they got their worm, they'll be happy. We're going to get our Storm Petrol down, so we are also happy with that. And yeah, I think we draw cards. I'll say. Um, probably that road around, but we can leave it. I mean, this is the thing with the black turn is that you can you can do all of your drawing, you can do all of your gambling and your digging from the deck and, and see what comes up. And if something better comes up, you know, you found it, you keep that. But if you don't find something better, you've got the road runner or, you know, whatever else it might be in the tray as that fallback. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that's what we're going to look to go for. So is it Barnesville? It is. But it's in the wetlands. Okay, wasn't expecting that. Um, so they're going to keep doing their digging, maybe thinking about this end of round a little bit. Maybe we should think about this end of round a little bit as well, because if we find um, something, you know, is there something that could eat three berries? <laughs> maybe we find like a, a whipping crane or something. But yeah, if we could find another wetland bird, um, I think we could be we could be doing well in this end of round, because they've only got one more turn left and I mean, theoretically, this one cultivated food. So we'll see. But yeah, let's um, let's draw cards and let's see. Peregrine Falcon could definitely go down there. Bruce Blackbird, that is a good find. Very much a fan of that. 
Um, and yeah, maybe not so much a fan of these, but King Rail, that definitely works. And okay, so now how do we play this? Um, I think we probably don't need the Roadrunner now, because we've got the Falcon. And I think we could do something like Falcon Blackbird in the Grasslands. Um, and that'd be very good with these extra cards. Um, we could have a very strong Grasslands there, so I like that a lot. Let's go off the top to see what we find. Okay, Broadwing Hot, probably. Um, yeah, probably not. Probably not into you. Um, and I think we keep this King Rail. I think we keep this King Rail. Um, yeah, I don't. I definitely don't think this Cormorant's very good. Um, and House Ren is a bit. Could work. But, um, yeah, it's not really. Not really the bird I am looking for. So let's keep. Let's keep the King Rail in. Yeah, I mean, there is a case to be made for uh, for sticking this down in the wetlands and winning the end of round. Does cost all of my food, potentially. How much? Yeah, that would cost all of my food. So I've got no fish, I've got no worms, so... Yeah, maybe... Maybe not such a good idea. Maybe not such a good idea. I might rather have that food than, than have the extra end of round goal points. Uh, but as I said, I think, um, I think Falcon and I think Blackbird... I think that could be very, very good to go with that in the grasslands. And, uh, yeah. With these extra cards we're getting through the Storm Petrol now. That's definitely going to help a lot. So they did take food. Um, that actually, that kind of works for us because we could go and take food as well now. I don't really want to, I don't really want to draw cards now. I want to draw cards next round when I get the fresh tray. Um, so I think we could take food now. We get a rat. We might get a worm or a fish or something in the rerun. So let's go ahead and do that. Do get a worm, so we're happy with that. We'll take another seed. Um, and okay, so this is starting to look better. We're starting to get somewhere here, so we do tie that end of round goal. Do we have anything good in this trait? No, but I think that's fine. So, um, do we go ahead and play? I think we play these these uh, grass and birds. So how would that work? We play. We play Blackbird, we play Falcon, we then have four food. So we could, once we play those two, we can lay eggs, get rid of the Robin, then play the King Rail, and then draw cards, and we can start throwing eggs for more cards. And it's another platform, so we're, we're going to smash this end around goal. Um, don't have any concerns around that. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's going to be good, and just looking at more cards is going to be powerful. And yeah, even if they're terrible, we've got this Blackbird to turn them into points. So let's go ahead. We'll get Peregrine Falcon down. And um, yeah, say so follow up. Follow up with Brewer's Blackbird, lay eggs, get rid of the Robin. And uh, then we can force this King Rail. And I don't know, if um, if they take food or if if it's if it's available. Oh, Trees Well, okay, yeah, they are going. We're all attacking in the wetlands now. Um, if, if a fish becomes available somehow, I certainly wouldn't mind um, taking an extra turn to go and grab that so I don't have to force but this is where those berries are coming in useful so um, yeah maybe not uh, maybe not going to come in useful later but we use them now I say it's going to help look at more cards and it's going to help um, yeah keep more cards for tucking on the blackbird which is definitely key for us so we've got our grasses going sort of just in the nick of time um, I think you do normally want to have your sort of engine going by the end of round two. Um, we're sort of getting it at the start of round three here. So yeah, could have could have been earlier, but um, the digging was kind of delayed. And this this is what happens. This is kind of the knock-on effect of, of a slow round one, you know, where you get distracted by a goldfinch in the tray and you don't get your wetland bird down early enough and you, and you slow down your digging. It slows down everything else and, and, and the engine gets set up a little bit slower. So... Yeah, on the one hand, it was annoying, but we're going to reap some benefit of that now with this Goldfinch, because I do imagine they'll be doing plenty of tucking here. So, like, it's a three-point engine, but it's really only a two-point engine because we get one back. But we've got a nice um, five, maybe six-point engine here in this grass, and so that's really, really strong for us. That's going to help out a lot. Um, and, yeah, should should make the end game quite straightforward. I mean, once we play this King Rail, we'll have seven turns left. I reckon we probably draw cards twice. We probably take food once. 
we maybe play a bird and then the rest is just going to be laying eggs because laying eggs is going to be our best action so um, yeah depending on the results of our digging um, and maybe a little bit of what comes up in that tray in the final round we are going to wait and see so okay they did actually they did take food so um, this could potentially save us um, an extra food by going for the reroll now because if we do get a fish we can pay fish worm berry we would still have a berry and a seed and then potentially two extra food um, so that would leave us with four food and gives us more flexibility on the birds we can play and worst case scenario if we play a grass and bird they can always turn into into more eggs so is that worth it or does that does that ruin this end around at all? I suppose that's the question, because I think now, actually, yeah, if we play King, Rail, and draw cards, we want to have the extra turn. Um, laying eggs, because, yeah, we want the extra bird for the end of So we'll play King, Rail now. We'll get the food later. What are we going to get on the bonus card? Okay, Plaffer Builder. Pretty nice. Definitely would take that for four points. So, yeah, four and four. Um, no complaints. No complaints on the bonus card, so we'll see. I mean, maybe we get nice, like, forest double play. A um, couple of star nests could come in handy, but... Yeah, we uh, we should, say, hopefully have not too tricky of an endgame. So, we'll see uh, We'll see what my opponents found from their digging. We'll see how much they continue doing that, but I think we've got enough of a counter here that we uh, we should be in a pretty good place. So what have they done? They played Raven, so we kind of manifested that by talking about it earlier, but um, they've got it, but it's very late. It's very late. It is another uh, platform there, so glad I got King Rail out, but um, yeah, they've got no cards, so they're going to have to keep digging for that Raven to actually come in handy. So let's go ahead. Let's draw cards. Don't want any of these in the tray. So Cerulea Warbler, top tier. Bell's Verio. I mean, there's a star nest, so if I could get another star nest or oh, a lovely platform nest that definitely helps so golden eagle pretty nice it's all coming out benelli's eagle very very nice as well all the platform nests what more could we want okay well we're kind of sport for choice here um very much sport for choice so Turtle dove could sort of come in handy it could sort of come in handy um i think of these two i think i'm more likely to play the bills here because i could definitely do vireo and benelli and then get extra points off this. So I think probably Cerulean Warbler goes. We keep the Benelli. Absolute um, no-brainer there. And yeah. So how would this work? We spend one more turn drawing cards. We then have eight cards. Which then means... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have enough. We'll have enough of the Benelli. That, that is always a concern when you're running something like Brewer's Blackbird. Where you're, where you're tucking and laying. You're sort of losing cards be a bit of a concern that you then don't have enough of Benelli but yeah I doubt that's a concern here so um, yeah I think we're set up well I think probably there I mean there is a world in which this turtle dove could have been useful I think if we didn't have Benelli and if we took food play the dove and then use that to get another food and we could have done something like dove and Bell's Vireo that could have been very nice um, but I think here yeah I think honestly we can do we can do Benelli and we can do Vario. Not too much trouble, so definitely like that. Um, and yeah, probably, probably we'll get rid of. I think this Golden Eagle because it's just a little bit too expensive with those three rats in the food cost. So they've gone and draw birds. No surprise, we are going to lay eggs. Also, no surprise, get rid of Golden Eagle. Come on, Falcon, you are going to keep hitting. So that's good continue on this six point engine which we definitely like so um, points are starting to get there as I said building back from a slow start um, and yeah we're going to hopefully if all goes to plan we'll get seven off this and six off this and who knows maybe a very nice bonus card from here as well so I would like that very much I would like that very much indeed and yeah I mean I've got something to think about on this end of round the last one anyway um, I think we're going to I think we're going to hold off Benelli. We're going last, and I think we play it where it's best. So if it can go in the forest or the wetlands and tie or win the end of the round, I think we do that. I think otherwise, it probably goes in the grasslands. Just, um, yeah, just for the extra um, eggs, potentially, if we've got a bit more food. And, of course, you're saving an egg by playing it there as well. So we'll see. 
we'll see. But as I say, when you're going second, I think you can wait a little bit and react and see what your opponent is doing. So for now, they're laying eggs. Um, and yeah, they're going to hope. They're going to hope that this bunting is going to get them some food. But they've got Raven, so it shouldn't matter too much. But we're going to win the end around. Very nice. And that is exactly the tray that I want to see when I've already got good stuff and my opponent's going first. This is this is not the time that you want Puffin to show up because um, that would be a dream bird for them. We've already got the dream birds in hand. So, yeah, Bill's very... I mean, actually... We might have to change approach, and maybe it's a good thing that I did actually keep this turtle dove because that feeder is not very Bell's very friendly, um, and would make it, yeah, maybe a little bit more tricky to get that out. So um, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe this turtle dove will, it will be better, and we can always get the egg, but it's a risk where you're only drawing one bonus card. I do much prefer these ones where you get C two, just uh, reduces that risk. A little bit in terms of, uh, yeah, giving giving yourself a second choice because you know we draw this and we find like visionary leader or something. It's not great, but if you get visionary leader and then you get oologist or something like that, definitely definitely feels better. So looks like they are drawing and doing lots of tucking, but yeah, goldfinch. Goldfinch is going to do its job here and um, do the tucking for us and get some more points on the board. Which is definitely appreciated. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what comes up in the trade. I was about to say it almost doesn't matter what comes up, but um, yeah, that would have that would have been the biggest jinx of the century. We're gonna draw Eastern Imperial Eagle and find a way if we can even you know fathom the possibility of being able to play that. Um, <laughs> not really sure we can. Um, but okay, well, I suppose, I don't know, maybe we keep the Galenial. Is that better than these bonus card birds? It's certainly better than Pete Woodpecker, so let's keep it. Um, but okay, well, I feel a bit bad for having both of these, but it's it's definitely a relief that they don't have either one, even if I'm not going to play both, because honestly, I'm not sure I can. Um, but maybe it is worth it, I don't know. I suppose the question is going to be, is it better to take food and play the Belzerio? Or is it better to draw cards again and play the Eagle? And it might be better to draw cards and play the Eagle. Because uh, this is a lot of points. Um, I suppose there is a question about, again, this end of round goal and trying to hit the Ethologist. You know, I want to play Benelli in the forest and then play Eagle in the in the grasslands. But then if I do that, I'm only getting three birds to the center round goal. And I do feel like my opponent's going to get four. So you're already losing three points. Uh, potentially from the center round goal. And those are the three points that you gain from the top cards. So Decisions, decisions, decisions. Definitely not trivial at this point in time. So we'll see what they're doing. Laying eggs. Okay, yeah, they're picking up lots of fish. So um, that definitely indicates wetland birds. Uh, but okay, right. Really got to think this out. So Benelli... Yeah, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We play Benelli and it uses Benelli and three more cards. We've still got three cards left. Um I mean we could we could just do Benelli and then lay eggs three times. Um That's kind of the boring way. <laughs> but it is potentially yeah, I mean if, if we're gonna assume the Falcon hits at six points a time, it's eighteen points. So taking food and playing Belzerio. You know, even if that's three more points from here for two turns worth, that's only six points and a bonus card. And I could be getting two lots of six points um, just by just by laying eggs twice. So honestly, it might be better to just uh, <laughs> to just play with any legs because again, even if we uh, if we draw cards and play the Eastern Imperial Eagle, so what? This would be this is a nine point play after the egg cost. Again, it takes two turns to get it out, so I think for now I think for now we get the Benelli down and we kind of just wait and see. We wait and see what my opponent's going to do, so probably probably Galenul is the one to go. Oh, I don't know, actually, because even here, we could we could play Benelli in the wetlands, but let's think about this. Benelli in the wetlands, it costs an extra egg 
and we lose two points off Ethologist, so we're really losing three points. And if we're losing three points to try and gain three points, what's the point? So let's just get this Benelli down um, as planned and not overthink it and take the points off, uh, off Ethologist for sure. So yeah, as I say, maybe here, maybe just legs three times. We've got space on the Blackbird. Um, that certainly feels like it would be a good choice because yeah we would need a very very good bonus card like we basically need we need at least six points we need like seven or more off this to be breaking even i think um and that's just uh that's not a gamble i'm comfortable taking and it's not even really a gamble i need to take i don't think at this point um i think as long as we play it safe and we just take the points that we know we can get we should be okay in this game so they're laying eggs again Okay, I mean, they might have a double play, actually. Maybe they're doing Great Egret into something, because they're picking up fishes and rats. So that would be kind of interesting, but yeah. It's baseboards. Let's do the boring thing and, uh, and lay the eggs. So Belsray, you can be the first to go. Falcon needs to hit if this uh, laying eggs is going to be worth it, so it does indeed. And yeah, we've got plenty of egg space as well. That is... That's key, because sometimes you come into these final rounds and you don't have loads of egg space, but I think just with the goldfinch with the king rel as well um, definitely helping out a lot there just giving us one less thing to worry about and i think that is uh, definitely always helpful so yeah two more turns um as i say i think it's just two more turns lay eggs i think that's the best play um it's uh it's 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 that mindset you've got to get in that base game or that baseball mindset there we go it was a double play um so i'm glad i saw that coming and didn't try and finesse this end around because yeah we wouldn't have been able to get anything from there um but yeah it's i think it's always worth remembering when you're playing baseboards um you know the baseline is laying x and i think it's always worth counting and it's a mistake i've you know it's a mistake i make it's a trap i fall into which is forgetting <laughs> that actually laying eggs is the best play so yeah i think when you come into these final rounds on the baseboards it's always it's always best to just count you know if I just laid eggs five times, what would that look like? And how many points is that? And then that is your baseline. You can you know, use that, work from there, and then look at other permutations of playing birds, taking food, drawing cards, other combinations of things, and see if you can find something that's better than just laying eggs for those turns. And even with, you know, this is this is quite um you know, this is quite an unassuming grass since it's only two birds, but it is you know, it's a lot of points. It's six points potentially for us, and I think that is hard to beat, as we've kind of discovered um, in end games like this. So, I'd sort of assume my opponent is is going to be laying eggs here, um, unless they're going to play another bird. No, they're going to tuck more, um, which I definitely don't mind. Uh, Eleanor's falcon hit, so that actually that potentially worked out for them. Maybe they got visionary leader. So, kind of wait and see on that. Um, but yeah. Easy for us. We'd definitely be laying eggs here. Eastern Pro Legal goes. Falcon, can you go 5 for 5? No. It's too much to ask for, but I think that's still a pretty good return there. So, lose the end of round, but we didn't get sidetracked. So, I'm quite happy to lose that one. And uh, we come here into the score. So, do feel like uh, we're going to come away with a win here. Definitely um, was a solid position. Good bonus cards. Definitely help out 10 for us there. Very nice. And around goals, I think it was a pretty even split. Uh, actually, they edged it slightly, but we got loads of eggs. Thanks to that grassless engine at the end. So, yeah, not too many caches. I think my opponent will bring it back a bit with the tucks, but they're not going to bring it back enough. And it is a win there for us. 98 up against 76. So, yeah, as I said, quite an unassuming grass. It's quite an unassuming board. Um, all in all. Um, nothing really too flashy. But um, just a solid start, you know, get your food access going, get your card access going. Wolf's Storm Petra was so nice. That just helps with that little bit of digging. Even into round two, you can still dig and find good stuff. And yeah, wasn't expecting Benelli, wasn't really prepared for it, but it sort of worked out seamlessly in that end game. You know, we ended with no food left over. We ended with no cards left over. So um, that always points towards good, efficient play. So happy with that. And of course, these bonus cards as well. We'll take a look over here. Ah, bird counter, so... Pretty good, pretty good for them um, to, to have that bonus card and definitely synergize well with their strategy. But yeah, maybe just the food access, I think, was maybe what slowed them down a little bit here. And yeah, when uh, when I get Goldfinch, 
it's very very tricky to go for the tucking engine and uh, and come away with the win there but there we go very happy with that very happy decent score and it's a win that as i said at the start i think we do need that to get through into the next stage so but now that is still unknown we'll have to wait and see um, but hopefully fingers crossed we do get through and we can get some more games here for you to watch so hopefully you did enjoy this one thank you very much for tuning in and uh, if you do want to see more wingspan tournament games please do me a favor hit that subscribe button follow along and i look forward to seeing you in another video very very soon